love Jesus. Whoops, we can say it, but do we mean it? Are we honest about it? If we love Jesus, will there be something different about our life? Will people know that we love Jesus? We're going to talk about God doing a new thing. That's our message. going to be God is doing a new thing. And what new things He's doing in your life? And so, if you want to grab your Bibles, we're going to be Isaiah chapter 43. We're going to go through the whole chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah 43, our key verse 18, 19. And we're going to go for verses 1 all the way through and break it down. And what I want to challenge you to do is ask yourself, is God doing a new thing in my life? Because if God isn't doing a new thing in your life, you know what will happen after a while? You'll get stagnant. Or you get prideful. You think, I've already arrived. I've already got things figured out. I've already, I already, I, I, I can't grow any more of Jesus. Yeah. So if you think you can't grow any more of Jesus, you know what you need to do? Grow more of Jesus. <laughs> because something's wrong if you think you've already already got this Christian walk figured out and, and you've arrived. You know? hope that nobody in this room thinks that. I don't think there's anybody in this room that thinks that. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the passage. And I want to let you know something. In the context, you're going to see in the context. The context is that God is going to talk about the nation of Israel. And he's going to talk about some things he's done in the nation of Israel. Some amazing things that he's done in the nation of Israel. And maybe God has done some amazing things in your life. But if you look at the context, he's telling the nation of Israel, I've done some amazing things, but forget what lies behind because I'm doing a new thing. Now, why would that be? If God's done some amazing things in your life, but why would God want to tell you, forget what I've done in the past, I'm doing a new thing. Because how many know that God wants to see us to grow from glory to glory on a regular basis to become more and more like Jesus? And sometimes we get caught up on the things that God has done that we're not very open to God doing something new and great. And what do I mean by that? Say you're a person that uh, was a burglar. You're broken into houses all the time. And you haven't broken into houses for years. You say, praise Jesus, I don't break into houses anymore. <laughs> How many know that it's great that you don't break into houses, but you've got to change more than not break into houses? Your issue wasn't breaking into houses. Your issue is that you thought you could steal from people. Okay? Or maybe just making something different is that, you know what? I, I've, been, I've been serving Jesus for 30 years, and my life is great and wonderful. Do you think that maybe that there's something more that God can do in the midst of your life being great and wonderful for 30 years? Maybe God is stretching you to do something you've never done before. How many of there are people that become missionaries years later after accepting Christ? Because maybe they're older and they have the time to now be a missionary. Or maybe what God is wanting to do is if there's a character in you, that a character fly in you that you haven't seen forever in your life. And now God says, I'm going to reveal that character flaw in you because now I want to do a new thing. Can God work in our lives no matter where we've been with Jesus? Whether it's been a day or it's been 20 years. I think you all can agree. God can work in our lives. So let's look at Isaiah. We're going to look at Isaiah. And this is Isaiah uh, 43. And we're going to break down the verses and take a look at it. It says, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. We walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba, in exchange for you. Let's break that down. When you see bold, you see underlined, that's not the Bible, that's me, it's to emphasize the points. It says, Fear not, in verse 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Do you know if you are a child of God, if you are called out by Jesus to be a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, do you know that God has redeemed you? Has He not? He's redeemed you from the pit. He's redeemed you from hell. He's redeemed you from the curse of being a fallen human being. 
is a call to my name, you're mine. That God says you are His. That we take on the name of Christian. And Christian means to be what? To be a Christ follower. We take on the name of Jesus. We don't understand it because we don't know the power of names. But you have to understand those who read this passage in Isaiah, they understood the power of name taken on the name. So if I was a, a carpenter, I would pass on that carpentry to my son, to my children, right? And what would happen if I was, happened if I was a good carpenter, what was on that furniture? Your name. Your name. And that name meant something. You know when you sat in that chair, that was made by the Dovers. That was a good chair. How many know when we take on the name of Christ, that should mean what? That we're Christians, that we're Christ followers, and you can trust us in our word. You can trust us in our actions and in our behavior. If I loan you as a Christian money, I can trust that you will pay it back. There's something powerful when you take on the name of God, and He's saying that we've been taught. God, this is crazy. Anybody ever been a broken human being? Why in the world would it take you and put his name on you? Oh, but Pastor Rich, I'm this, I'm that. Well, I don't know about you. I just know me. I'm amazed, I'm in awe and shock that God would take a person that was an atheist that didn't believe in him, a person who became a Christian, a person who's fallen, made a lot of mistakes along the way, sin and everything else, and he still wants to put his name on me. That's powerful when you understand that. And if you really understand that, you would live differently, would you not? It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall be burned. And the flames shall not consume you. Does that sound like any story you do in the Bible? Think about it. Pass through the waters. Was there some gigantic waters that some people passed through? It was called the Red Sea. He says, when you pass through the waters, what? I'll be with you. Through the rivers. You know a river? If you know about the Jordan River, the nation of Israel, when they crossed through the Jordan River, they entered into the Promised Land. You don't think the people and the nation of Israel, when they heard this being prophesied, being proclaimed by Isaiah, it was God speaking, that they weren't thinking about what God had done in generations past? That God had been working in generations past? And he says, you walk through the fire, you should not be burned. Anybody walk through the fire? Daniel? Daniel? Was it Daniel that walked through the fire? Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego walked through the fire. It says that you, the flame should not consume you. Is that true? You don't think the nation of Israel knew that story? So when God is saying that, He's telling them, look at what I've done in the past. And why? Verse 3. If I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I want you to think about that. If God did those things in the past, can He do them today? Anybody ever felt like they've gone through a fire? Can God carry you through the fire? We preached about that. That there are two different fires. That there is the judgment fire and there's the refining fire. And as Christians, we can go through both of them. How? The judgment fire is when we as a Christian do things we shouldn't do. Will God bring judgment? Will God bring consequences? As a Christian, will He bring judgment? Are there consequences? Yes. yes. And I say when you willfully sin and there is those kind of fires you go through as a Christian, you smell like smoke afterwards. What do I mean by that? You've probably gone through that fire and there's probably some consequences. And you know what? You know that you went through some judgment fire. And then there's the fire that's the refiner's fire. The refiner's fire is you're doing everything right. And you still have things come your way. Can you live for Jesus with all your heart and get cancer? Is that God judging you? No. Is that a refiner's fire? Will that refine you? Can that get you closer to Jesus? Absolutely. So there's refiners we go through. Those fires, you don't smell like smoke. Because you know what? You have a right attitude. Everybody around you says, I wish I had that kind of attitude. And out of either way, is God with you? The judgment fire, or the fire is God with you. He's always with them. Your Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God's our Savior. He's our deliverer. He's the one that's there with us. So this is talking about former things, isn't it? These are former things that have happened in the past that it's talking about. Is there former things that God has done in your life? I want you to think about those things that God has done in your life. 
Think about the different things that God has done. He's brought you to a place of salvation. Maybe He healed your body. Maybe He delivered you for something. Be thinking about the things that God has done, those former things that God's done, amazing things that God has done in the past. Think about those things. Verse 4, why did God do it? Those things that God has done. Has God done the things in your life that you didn't deserve? Has God blessed you when you shouldn't even have gotten the blessing? Think about those things. Isaiah 43, 4 says, Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you. I give in return for you people's exchange for your life. God says that you are precious in His life. I'm sure somebody here has not felt precious in God's eyes before. I'm sure there's somebody here has felt like that you have no value and you have no worth. I'm sure there's somebody here that wonders right now, today, does God really love me? Because God has done some amazing things in my life, but I've done some terrible things to God. How many know we do that? God can do something amazing in our life, and we can right, go right back into that sin that He delivered us from. God then can do some amazing things in our life, and then when troubles come, we grumble and complain. Do you know, no matter what you say or do, that if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that God says you're precious in His eyes, that you're honored, and that He loves you? That should mean something to you. That should change how you live your life. Because like I've said before, when I know my life wife loves me, do I live differently? How do I live? If I know Carmi loves me, do you think I love her more? Yes. Yeah. Huh? If I don't think she loves me, am I going to love her the same way? No, the Christian answer is I love her no matter what, right? That's the Christian answer, right? No, if she treats you like a witch, you're, you're going to love her anyways. That's the Christian answer. And I'm glad that some of you have arrived so if people teach you, treat you absolutely horribly, you always just love on them all the time. <laughs> so I'm glad that all of you, when the person puts in front of you, when you turn around and you've got to get to work and you've got to get back, you've you got a short lunch, a 30 minute lunch, you're trying to get your, your bike to eat for lunch, and that person jumps in front of you and they have a big long grocery bag or cart there, and they jump in front of you, and all you have to do is buy your sandwich. I'm glad you're also Christianese and you say, Hallelujah, let me just bless you and I'll pay for your bill. <laughs> but you know, we do it to God and He still honors us. When we didn't know Him, He still honored us. How do we know that? He brought us into a relationship with Jesus Christ. So, if whatever things have done in the past, God has been there, good or bad. He's been there. Verses 5 to 7. Fear not, for I am with you. If you know God loves you, if you know God that you're precious to God, if you know He's carried you through the fire, He's taken you through the, the troubled waters of whatever is done in your life, when you know that, guess what? You won't have fear. You know that God is with you. We're going to face something that causes fear in our life. But when we realize that God's with us, it's different. When my wife got her breast cancer, guess what? Was there fear in us? Absolutely. Because as soon as the diagnosis is there, it wasn't just that she has breast cancer. People didn't tell you their stories that when you get breast cancer, it goes through your whole body. And her relative died of cancer. And by the way, thank you for that news. Because you tell somebody you got breast cancer, somebody will tell you about a relative that got to die. Isn't that interesting how people do that? But if you know God and He's there and He's been with you, then it says, Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the rest. I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give up and to the south and up a Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone is called by my name, whom I pray for my glory, whom I am formed and made. You know what God is saying? I have delivered you. I have set you free. I have done these things in your life. Don't have any fear and let some others know about who I am. That's what that's talking about. Have you seen God work in former things in your life? That you should be sharing with others of what God is doing. And when things come your way, you know that there's a testimony coming. Now, how do you live that way? When bad comes in your life, that you look at, boy, a testimony's coming. Or do you look when things come bad in your life and say, oh, woe is me, I don't know what's going to happen now. Or do you say, I don't know what God's going to do, but there, I don't know if it's going to be a year from now, two years from now, three days from now, but a testimony's coming. This foot, 
I was bound down and discouraged, and I, my wife called me a wimp because I thought for sure it's never going to heal. I thought I broke it ten more times, all the stuff that's going on. And then finally I decided, you know what, God is with me, and you know what, I still wonder what's going on. I took my cast off because it feels really bad, or my, my, my foot thing, because it's really hurting when I wear it. And so I took it off, I'm wearing my boot. I don't know what's going on. It was all, all red and everything. I said, maybe the boot's too tight, I don't know. Out of it, there started to be some fear. But you know what I thought of? God has delivered me, delivered me, delivered me, worked in the past. God is going to take care of my foot. Is he going to take care of my foot? There's going to be a testimony some point in time. Is that the mindset that you have when you go through the troubles and that you want to give a witness to others? Verse 8, bring out the people who are blind, yet have eyes, who are deaf, yet have ears. Do you know how many people are deaf and, 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 and uh, blind? Spiritually. And when God is saying, look, this is the things that I've been doing, this is the things I've been working, don't have any fear, share with others, and find somebody that doesn't believe I work. Find somebody you can give a testimony to. They don't believe God can work, but you have a testimony because what God's done in the former things. <clears throat> All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right and let them hear it say it is true. There are people that question if God is real. There are people that question if God is a personal God. You know how you can help them? Talk about those former things that God has done in your life. Share with them how God has worked in your life. Share, testify, witness to the things that God has done. Don't be ashamed of your salvation. I always wonder why Christians who have been born again accepted Christ. I don't care if you accepted Jesus when you were four years old and really don't have a whole lot of sin in your life compared to those who from six were drinking and doing drugs. And I know people at six years old, their parents were already giving them cocaine. Do you know regardless of your story, if you accepted Jesus, that's a testimony. And to share what God has done in your life. All this is about the former days and what God has done. But listen, we're going to keep on going. Verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant who I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before me no God was formed, nor should there be any ad God after me. I am the Lord, and besides me there's no deliverer. There's no other deliverer than Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Are you proclaiming that? I believe in the 12 step principles. I believe good can come from AA, but AA is not the deliverer. Do you know that? I believe in counseling. There's some good counselors out there. That counselor is not your deliverer. There's medication for those who have certain diseases. Take it. But guess what? It's not your deliverer. Who's your deliverer? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Should you not maybe go to AA? Should you maybe not go to the doctor for your medication? Should you not go to a counselor? I'm not saying that. But who's going to be your deliverer? Jesus Christ and Him alone. Because there is no other God. No medication can do what Jesus can do. No counselor can do what Jesus can do. No program can do what Jesus can do. So listen... Everything you're depending upon, there comes a place where God says, forget the former things and you ought to do a new thing. Why do I say that? Too many Christians are trusted things for years and years and years and they're the same people they've always been. Have you met them? How many years do you got to go to AA to stay sober? Some will say it was as long as it keeps you sober. <clears throat> That's true. But how many know in this bondage, if you have to go to five days a week to meetings to stay sober, how many know that becomes bondage to those meetings? Can God deliver you? Yeah. When you let God work in your life, and when God heals you, you're able to offer fruit to somebody else. We've been talking Wednesdays on fruit. If you want to be the one that bears fruit, God commands us to bear fruit. If you want to be the one that bears fruit, let it heal you. Let it deliver you. Let him go in those dark places. Because when God goes in those dark places, light comes in them. And you know what? Light comes in dark places. And you get to be a light for somebody else. And when God says, he says, listen, listen. 
I blot out your transgressions and remember them not. Stop living in past regret. If any of you know me, I'm a, I'm a holiness preacher. I preach that God calls us to holiness, God calls us to purity. If anybody know me, I also work with most people who have been very unholy. Isn't that interesting? Because I believe God delivers. Because I believe God sets free. Because I believe that God loves taking unholy people and cleansing them with the blood of Jesus Christ and transforming them and making them vessels of honor because it gives them so much glory. Because then you have a testimony to touch somebody else. This is Preacher Rich. Creating Futures is truly about helping individuals and churches to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. My heart's desire is to see as many people as possible hear how they can have eternal life by having Jesus as their Lord and Savior and help them to grow in Christ. Give me a call at 1-866-WANT-GOD. That is 1-866-WANT-GOD. If you like this video, please click on the like below and subscribe to our Creating Futures channel. To learn about going to heaven, click on the attached video or go to creatingfutures.org. That is creatingfutures.org.